Where did the techie side of you come out? Um, I love, I've always loved computers. Um, I'm not a traditional musician from the perspective of playing an instrument. Um, my instrument is the computer. So um, I wanted to dive into that realm and understand the folks that were behind the tool that liberates my creativity. Um, I was blessed to have been a part of the launching of iPods and iTunes. Um, Apple selected the Black Eyed Peas to launch that product back in 2003. Um, I became really good friends with Jim Basile and the, uh, the founders of RIM and worked with uh, the folks in Waterloo on Blackberry back in 2006. Um, really good friends with um, Sean Fanning, who created Napster. So I just really love that world. Um, and that really pushed me to, uh, to be super passionate about technology. Um, and, and the part that really, really I take pride in is being a part of Beats. Um, I was a, a third equity shareholder in Beats, a silent member, but contributed leaps and bounds um, that helped me, you know, really add to the growth of that company. So thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Dr. Dre, um, when we sold the uh, company to Apple. And I suppose looking back at, at your, how, how music and technology in your life has come together, it's almost like your life represents what's happened in the wider world subsequently because of course for a long time people thought of technology on one side and creativity on another side as not as, as the two not necessarily coming together now of course nowadays you know so for instance in the old days people would think that you know the IT crew or the IT people were not the creative people now I think people have, have moved you know a long way but but actually marrying creativity and technology has been something that you've been at for decades. Yeah, I, I, I realize that our industry, the music industry, at its core is technology. Yeah. Um, there wouldn't be a recording industry if it wasn't for Thomas Edison and the gramophone. There wouldn't be radio if it wasn't for, you know, uh, Marconi, Tesla, Edison, and the inventions of, you know, um, that we've had in the early 1900s. So here we are um, in a brand new realm that's about to kick off and it's exciting. And, and talking about where we are now and looking back at your childhood, you, you grew up a kid of the 80s, you're, you're a bit younger than me, but we're, we're three years different. Um, you know, we, we were both kids of the 80s and that had its own, we had our own technology sort of just at the beginning. But looking at the kids, now though, you know, they are right there at the center of that, you know, fourth industrial revolution. And the, the, the technology that they are interacting with every day is completely different to the technology that we were interacting with. And I wonder if that is for you a, a source of excitement or a source of nervousness on their behalf, you know, the, all the technology that's bombarding them all the time. Is that something we should be fearful of or completely embracing right now is the most exciting time to be creative if you're this is the age of the idea person because now you can materialize an idea instantly you don't have to wait for someone to you know open the door for you to see a script or you don't have to have all this back knowledge of how to, you know, create a screenplay. You could do that immediately, instantly. Um, you don't have to play an instrument. You're going to be able to speak to the machine, and the machine would be able to execute and uh, with banter what's inside your mind. And so that's a that's a pretty magnificent time that we're in. Um, and we've never we've never seen this. Um, liberation when it comes to the individual with an idea.